Well, good morning and welcome to Coffee and Commentary. You know, I think one of the most difficult things that has come out of the the pandemic and the shelter in place orders is learning how to live in harmony with one another with the people that are in our household. That's a perpetual issue and a challenge for all of us. So how do we do that? Well, if you have your Bible, just take a moment and turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4, because here Paul tells us exactly how we can do it. In Ephesians 4, he says, you need to live consistent with the calling you've received. And he begins with this issue of living in unity or in harmony with each other. Notice verse 3, being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. He says, listen, the Spirit has already created with this unity between you and other believers. You need to work to preserve it. How do you do that? Well, the answer is in the verse that's right before it, because he tells us here how. He identifies those attitudes that breed unity, the kind of petri dish in which unity and harmony really dwell in every setting, in every relationship. Look at verse 2. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love. Those are four amazing attitudes that breed harmony in all of our relationships. Let me just challenge you to think and meditate on these things by just pointing out the differences. Notice, first of all, there must be humility. Pride is the enemy of humility. Proverbs says, where there's pride, there'll always be strife. So strife, contention, fighting is often, always, the result of pride. What is humility? Well, Paul defines it in Ephesians 2, verses 3 and 4, where he essentially says, here's what you're to put on. You are to come to the verdict that others are more important than you are, and you are then to commit yourself to serving them. It's exactly what Peter says in 1 Peter 5, 5, when he says, clothe yourselves with humility. He uses a a word picture that points back to the Last Supper when Jesus got up from dinner, clothed himself with the towel of a slave, and washed the disciples' feet. He's really saying, intentionally take the position of a servant and serve one another. That's what humility is. And when we take that position, it breeds harmony. Are you actively, with the people in your household, seeking to serve them? in very practical, everyday ways, that breeds harmony. There's a second attitude here, and that is gentleness. Humility is how we think of others. Gentleness is how we treat them. It's the manner in which we interact with them. And and it's true regardless of the provocation. It's really the opposite of harshness. It's like that mother dog who lies there taking the nips and barks and the terrorizing nature of a little puppy with a calm, gracious spirit. That's how we have to be with the people in our lives. Even when they nip and scratch and bite. How can we do that? How can we have that gentle spirit remaining calm, under control in our manner, regardless of the provocation that comes? Well, the only way is because the spirit produces it in us. Uh, One of the fruits that the Spirit produces, or part of the fruit the Spirit produces in our life, is this very virtue, gentleness. The ability to remain calm and under control in our manner, how we relate to people, regardless of the provocation. So, I encourage you to consider if there's there's disharmony in your home, in your living environment, is the issue a lack of gentleness? You see, a harsh response stirs up anger, according to Proverbs 15.1. But a gentle response breeds peace and harmony. There's a third attitude Paul points out here in Ephesians 4.2, and that's patience. Patience is the right response to the sins of others. It's like God who is slow to anger. Patience is slowness to anger even when that anger is deserved. In other words, Patience is how we ought to respond to the people around us when they sin against us. The people in your home will sin against you, and they'll sin against you often. In the same way that God is slow to anger, 
we have to exercise this virtue of patience. We have to give the people around us who have sinned against us time, time to repent, time to make it right. And of course, it, the last verse in Ephesians 4 says, when they do, we're, we're to have a forgiving spirit and we're to forgive them. But we're to be patient with people and not jump on the, the quickest you know, response is to sort of defend ourselves and to jump on their, their sin. We need to be patient as God is patient. There's a, there's a fourth attitude here, and it's in verse 2. It's showing tolerance for one another in love. This is our response to the faults of others. Patience is our response to the sins of others. This is how we respond to the weaknesses and faults of others. It means to bear with, to patiently put up with someone. It's bearing with another person's weaknesses. It's not stopping our love and commitment to them because of those faults in them that either offend us or displease us. They're different. The people around us are different. That's okay. And we need to overlook those faults and weaknesses and put up with them. Frankly, without this quality, no group of people can live together in peace and harmony. It's absolutely essential. But notice we're not to express this overlooking of the faults and weaknesses of others grudgingly. Paul says, showing tolerance for one another in love. In other words, we're to be quick to overlook the faults and weaknesses of others and graciously put up with those things because we truly love them. So the question is, is there disunity and discord in your home right now? It may very well be because one of these attitudes or more is missing. Let's think about these things together. Have a great day.